Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I'm excited to take you on a journey of creating Natasha's cosplay dress. This dress is packed with amazing details, so I knew I had to break it down into smaller pieces to tackle it effectively. We'll be focusing on the dress itself in this video, with all the other cool elements like the leather breastplate coming up next. As with any cosplay project, the first step is planning. I visualize the dress, its different sections and the unique details like the asymmetrical sleeves and skirt. Once I have a pattern that highlights my body and feels as my character, it's time to get started. Before we start sewing, you'll need to buy fabric. Let me show you what I got. Steel blue cotton for the skirt, raspberry red cotton for the lining and details, black lycra for gloves and details, white cotton for various parts. We'll start with the top. I trace all pattern pieces on the back of the white cotton with chalk. After cutting them out, I repeat this process for the lining. I used comfy white cotton shirts from Rick's closet. Here's a cool tip for the back. Since it has a circle in the middle, trace and cut the pattern for the lining in two halves to ensure you can flip the fabric correctly. Once the lining is ready, we'll sew the main fabric and lining pieces together, right sides facing each other. Don't forget to iron your seams for a clean finish. Sew the front part of the dress to the back. The side seam of the top is a great spot to hide a zipper. Once the front and back pieces are attached, it's sleeve time. Natasha's sleeves are quite unique. The left sleeve is sleek with a split front and a red bow, while the right one is longer and has a rolled up section with blue details and a giant safety pin. This means we'll need two different sleeve patterns with only the part where it connects to the dress being the same. Once we have this base, we're ready for our cut pieces. And this is basically the same process. Trace, cut and iron your main fabric and your lining. Sew darts into your fabric to curve your fabric in the right shape. Put the right sides together, pin them and sew once again. Now here's a little secret. I use an old bra as a base for the top. This ensures the top will fit perfectly and the bra straps will be hidden exactly where I want them. It might make getting into the dress a bit trickier, but it's a great way to achieve a secure and comfortable fit. The bra also helps guide how I attach the cups to the top, following the underwire for a nice curve. For the collar, I chose a stretchy black lycra and some leftover black cotton. I don't want the collar to be stretchy, but I do want it to look consistent with the other black details, even though I might upgrade it to fake leather later on. We'll trace this pattern, sew the collar to the front of the top and attach velcro at the back for easy closure. On the back of the top, I added some elastic to keep the two triangle shapes together for now. The top is now ready for a skirt. I started by pinning the blue layers to the top and then drew lines with chalk to define where each section of fabric would end. Since both sides are completely different, creating a paper pattern wasn't necessary. These blue pieces will be lined with a raspberry red fabric. We'll sew them together with the right sides facing each other. Wonder clips come in handy for handling large pieces of fabric like these. To attach the skirt at the top, I used a triangular ruler to mark the front for perfect centering and the right angle. I added my own twist to the blue section on the back. Instead of sewing two loops, I added a bow. The blue part also helps guide the attachment of the skirt pieces. This white section below the blue helps as well. It will need a proper button eventually. For the white skirt layers, I noticed the white fabric was a bit translucent when lined with red. To solve this, I added another white layer for better coverage. As you can see, the white skirt has a red and blue detail on the front. To make sure these red and blue sections flow perfectly, I used some iron-on interfacing. It gives the fabric a bit more structure. Now, I really wanted the stitching to disappear on these colorful sections, so I hand stitched them to the white skirt with an invisible stitch. Let me tell you, it's not my favorite job, but it definitely gives the cleanest look. I added some finishing touches with blue and grey edge stitching around the white skirt pieces, the sleeves and a few spots on the top. It really elevates the overall look. Now, attaching these skirt pieces to the top with a bra already there, let's just say it presented a bit of a challenge. The bra likes to get in the way sometimes. So to make things easier, I edge stitched the fake leather bias band beforehand. 
This allowed me to sew the pieces together in separate sections, much more manageable. And guess what? Turns out I didn't even need that zipper I initially planned. So I was able to sew the white skirt right onto the front of the dress. But if you do need a zipper, you can always use Velcro to attach the front part. Here's the dress so far. It's already coming together and Natasha is definitely recognizable. But the best part? There's still more to come. In the next video, we'll be diving into those details. The belt, the breastplate, the red bow on the sleeve, all the good stuff. If you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button. Let's keep making cosplay together. See you next time.